Hello. In this section, I'm going to talk about an instructional strategy, mnemonics, and how teachers can use that to teach math vocabulary to their students. But before I get started, I want to remind you that the PowerPoint slides that I'm referring to are available on this Georgia Department of Education website for you to download and use while viewing the video. Now, mnemonics. Mnemonics is a term that's been around for quite some time, from Holmes, which is used to remember the, the Great Lakes, to Roy G. Biv, which helps remember the colors. But basically, a mnemonic, it's a device, uh, formula, rhyme, visual aid to help students remember pieces of information. It's a strategy that's actually very well suited uh, for students who have difficulties focusing their attention and exhibit poor motivation. Um, now, it's important to note that mnemonics is a memory-aiding device, and within that context, it helps kids remember information that has already been encoded, and it helps them retrieve it. Uh, oftentimes, students with learning disabilities or students who are struggling with learning have difficulty retrieving the information, so a mnemonic allows sort of a structure and elabor elaboration technique to help the kids retrieve it. Now, it's important to note that along with mnemonics instruction you also need to have application comprehension you know taking that information once it's retrieved and then applying it in the context of of what it is that you're focusing on for that particular day another uh, aspect of mnemonics that i think is worth noting is that kids tend to enjoy using mnemonics it sort of helps bring bring boring math concepts that are sort of abstract to life in terms of, uh, of, of helping students remember what it is um, that they're trying to learn. Now under mnemonics, mnemonics is a sort of a broad umbrella term. Under that you have a couple of different types. You have peg word method, letter strategies, and the keyword method. We're focusing today on the keyword method and its application to math vocabulary in the classroom. Interesting to note here, uh, the keyword method has been around for quite some time, a really, really long time. But basically, in a nutshell, what the keyword method does is it takes a similar sounding word, it matches it to the vocabulary word, and then there's a visual image that helps the kids sort of make sense of the, of the, the, the meaning of the, or the concept. It's been successfully used in foreign language, vocabulary, science terms, English, social studies, and as of recently, it's beginning to be applied into the area of math vocabulary. Math vocabulary is very technical, but it's not any tech more technical than specific science terms from chemistry and biology. So you're starting to see this evidence-based approach applied in the area of mathematics. Another aspect of the key word that I, I, I think is also worth noting is the fact that it's not that difficult to incorporate into your, into your classroom instruction for those important vocabulary words. But basically, it has three parts, and the purpose of the keyword is it strengthens the connection between new words and the new information. Think of it as this is what many strategic learners do. They take a piece of new information and they make it fit what they already know. Kids with learning disabilities need this structured part of learning to help them do this. But with the keyword, as you'll see here, there's three parts to the keyword. The first one is you take um, an acoustically similar sounding word and match it to the new vocabulary term. Now, it's important to note that this similar sounding word must be familiar to the students and this will be very dependent uh, upon the grade level and, uh, and ability level of the students. Second, the abstract information or the definition is then represented into a picture and this picture is representing the information that we want the students to remember. And then the third step here is it's tied together with sort of a, sa uh, a sentence that ties everything together and it is probably best illustrated through some examples and I have one example here for the term perpendicular I've matched that with the phrase purple dictionary notice they sound similar not only do they sound similar purple dictionary is going to be familiar to most kids at most grade levels now the definition that I'm emphasizing here is 90 degrees sits at a 90 degree angle uh, definitions with vocabulary words will depend on the student and their grade level as far as what it is but if we look at it there's the similar sounding word 
there I have a picture is as about as basic as you get drawn in PowerPoint and a little phrase hello kids my name is purple dictionary I sit on the bookshelf at a 90 degree angle the purple dictionary is perpendicular to the bookshelf that that phrase or that sentence is tying everything together for the student and what you're trying to do is build links or connections here is another example and in this particular example this is more of, a, of an artistic illustration they don't have to be illustrated but this is just an example again that you have a purple dictionary sitting on a shelf the 90 degrees is accentuated and again you have a sentence that's tying this together and sort of think of this as making a series of connections so the student hears the word purple dictionary that then is linked to the familiar purple dictionary. The purple dictionary is connected to the visual, the picture of a purple dictionary sitting at a 90 degree angle, which then leads the student to the meaning of perpendicular. That's just one example. Here's another example for parallel lines. I've, I've matched that or linked that with pair of elves. Sounds the same, will be familiar to most kids. Parallel lines, pair of elves. The pair of elves are the same distance apart and will never intersect. There's the definition, the abstract part that's now connected to the picture of the pair of elves which is linked to the pair of lines. What you're doing is you're building a series of connections for the students that otherwise they may have missed. Here's one of my more favorite ones that I have used which is for the term Ray. Run away. Ray, run away. And I link that together, again, your basic graphic uh, uh, clip art from PowerPoint. Start here, run away, and never stop running, Ray. Again, you're linking it to a similar sounding word. You have a picture that represents the definition, and it's tied together with the sentence. And this is building links and connections to help kids retrieve. Again, as I noted earlier, this is helping them retrieve the definition of Ray, you still then have to follow through with more application types of instruction of how that applies and in the context and the situation. Again, here's an artistic rendition of Ray run away. Notice the, the name is on the shirt, but again, the same principles hold true. It's connected with um, a word, the abstract meaning of a starting point and a line continuing on forever. Ray run away Ray. Ray started running at point A and never stopped running. He is a Ray. But again, don't get caught up in the illustration, especially you secondary math teachers who are very good at drawing circles. Uh, it does not have to be an elaborate illustration, but what you're looking for is, is the concept and sort of the, the, the three principles, which is a similar sounding word that is familiar, a picture that represents the concept tied together with some sort of sentence. So those are just a, a few examples. Uh, they're not intended to be the only examples, just examples. And again, to summarize with the keyword strategy, there's three parts to it. Recoding, uh, matching the word with a familiar, similar sounding word. Relating that keyword in a picture, interactive, that will help the kids remember the information you're trying to teach. And then finally, the sentence so to speak, that will help them retrieve everything. Again, you're building a series of connections. Now, with the keyword mnemonics, remember, it is one technique that can be applied to teach hard to learn or essential math vocabulary. It, it does take a little bit of time selecting your keywords. Again, what's important is that the keyword matches in a, in a similar sounding fashion the term that you're trying to teach represented the definition in a picture, tying it together with a sentence. The mnemonic can be a, a strategy for teachers, for those, those students that seem to struggle with vocabulary that are not making important connections. Mnemonics and the, specifically the keyword is, is a strategy that will help the students link that information together. And again, I just want to remind everyone, the PowerPoint that I was referring to is available on this Georgia Department of Education website for you to download and use while viewing this video.